Today I'm going to show you three different rigs for three different angling situations, meaning that you can catch carp wherever you go. So the three carp rigs that I'm going to show you today are the hair rig, possibly the most simple and easy to tie rig of all time, the chod rig, which will enable you to present baits even on lakes that are very silty and weedy, and the zig rig which will come into play when the fish are swimming in the upper layers away from the bottom. So let's start with the hair rig. To tie up a hair rig, you're basically learning to tie something called a knotless knot. This is where you pass the line through the eye, wrap the line around the shank, trapping the hair in place, and then come back through the eye and tighten it down. This basically gives you the chance to put your bait onto a loop of line that hangs beneath the hook, meaning your hook is always exposed, ready to hook into a fish, and also meaning the bait can't mask the hook point or get in the way of a fish getting hooked. The hair rig is uh, best fished with a sinking bait, such as a boily, sweet corn, pepper army, something like that, that will be sit sitting on the bottom. However, if you find yourself wanting to fish with a, a buoyant bait like floating sweet corn or a pop-up, you can convert the rig into a pop-up rig simply by pinching a split shot a centimetre or two away from the hook. I'd be switching over to a pop-up if I was fishing over quite a large bed of bait and I wanted the fish to notice my hook bait first, or potentially if there was a little bit of weed or leaves and twigs and stuff on the bottom and I wanted my bait just to sit up away from that so the hook didn't get stuck in, in any of that detritus on the bottom. The hair rig tends to work best when you're fishing over an area of the lake bed which is relatively firm. So gravel, clay, some silt is fine but not really soft slimy silt because you don't want your hook bait being pulled down and disappearing into it. When you're on a lake which is full of weeds, soft strandy weeds that are coming up towards the surface or on somewhere with deep slimy silt, you actually want to use a chod rig. The chod rig is designed so that your bait, a buoyant pop-up, it can be a piece of floating corn as well or potentially a piece of cork or something, but your floating bait is on a short section of line that slides up and down the main line or leader. What this means is that your lead, which is attached to the end, the lead can fall into the silt or fall into the weeds, disappear into that thick, slimy, horrible stuff, but your, your bait slides up and settles down gently on top of any of that. This kind of means that you can chuck a chod rig into a swim where otherwise your hook would just end up buried in something or you'd end up tangled and snagged in the weeds. A chod is kind of what I uh, go to if I'm not going to be casting around, not using a marker float, not looking for spots, like not trying to find clear areas. If I just want to throw a bait straight out there, see a fish jump, chuck it on it, it will normally be a chod rig that I'm throwing out because it will present and settle down on top of pretty much any type of lake bed. Whilst the chod rig isn't particularly easy to tie, you can get really tied uh, ones available and I'd actually say a chod is a good rig for beginners to use because you don't necessarily have to feel your lead down, you don't necessarily have to bait a spot in advance or work out where the clear gravel spots are between the weeds. You can kind of cast a chod rig pretty much anywhere and have your bait presented and give, your, give yourself a chance of a bite. When I'm fishing with a chod, it's either that I'm fishing like without any loose feed and it's just a single hook bait blasted out there because I've seen a fish crash, or I will bait uh, with boilies. The reason I will bait with boilies rather than like particles or pellets and stuff is because when you hook a fish on a chod, chod rig, you kind of need that fish to be moving. You need the fish to be picking up a bait, moving along, taking your hook bait, moving to go and find another boilie, and that's when the line tightens up and you hook into the fish. When I'm fishing in weeds, particularly with the choddy, I will loose feed around it maybe with half boilies. So by chopping the boilies in half, they flutter down a bit slower and come to rest on top of the weeds rather than sort of falling in the gaps going all the way to the bottom. When you're setting up your chod rig, you've got to choose where you're going to place uh, your bead, your top bead. The way the choddy sort of works is that you've got your lead on the end, you've got a chod bead that stops 
the, the, the actual chod rig from sliding down to the lead. And then somewhere above it, you set your no trace bead. This is kind of like a little bead that can pop off of the line uh, if you snap up, making it a safe rig. But where you set that is based on how deep you think the silt or weeds are. If you're fishing in a lake which you know the silt is really bad or, or there's weeds that are you know like a meter of weeds you want to set your bead at the top right far up so that your hook bait can slide really far whilst the lead disappears down into the silt and it will come to come to rest on top of it however somewhere which is a little bit firmer on the bottom and it's only low lying weed you could set your bead just a few inches up from the lead some people will fish their chod rigs on a leader uh, be that lead free or lead core leader and other people prefer to use it on straight on the main line uh, my experiences are fishing weed uh, quite where there's quite a lot of weeds coming right off the, off the bottom i like to fish it just naked on the main line it sinks a little slower settles down over it more naturally and the main line can be actually more camouflaged than what a leader can be however if you're somewhere maybe quite snaggy or there's not a lot of weeds on the bottom, potentially you're fishing over a more clearer area, uh, then a leader can be better. Because uh, like lead core, for example, is very heavy, weighs down, keeps it pinned down to the bottom, away from the fish's fins. And if you are fishing somewhere with lots of snags or danger like that structure, then having that leader is gonna give you more confidence that you're not gonna get cut off. Now, the next setup that I'm gonna talk about is the zig rig. This is something that comes into play when the carp aren't feeding on the bottom. So you're not seeing any bubbles coming up. You're not seeing you know, fish taking baits off the deck. Instead, they're all cruising around in the mid water or they're swimming around just underneath the surface. You need to be able to tie a zig rig. A zig is set up with a monofilament line. Normally people use something that's reasonably thin so that it's quite invisible and you'll fish it with a buoyant hook bait, be that a piece of foam, some cork, or a pop-up. Some people, especially in winter time, to add a bit of movement to the hook bait, will use a piece of foam with a couple of maggots super glued to the top. Uh, I've no, I know people have done well on that, but loads of, loads of anglers will literally just fish a lump of black foam, whipped onto the back of like a size 10 hook, fished on a length of mono off the deck, and it just seems to unlock places where the fishing's really difficult. When no one's had a bite off the bottom for weeks on end and you just can't work out how you're gonna catch these fish, putting a zig out can be an absolute game changer, especially if you experiment with the depth. What you find with zigs is that they're not very effective if you've got them set to the wrong depth. If all those fish are cruising around just beneath the surface, you really need to get your marker float out count how deep it is with the float and then tie up a zig that's just going to sit beneath that. On lakes which are really really deep zigs can be more complicated you'll need to learn how to tie adjustables however on most lakes you'll be okay tying up fixed zigs. You can also use zigs to improve your surface fishing. By that I mean Try tying up a zig that's just a little bit deeper than the water in front of you so the bait actually sits up on the surface. That way you could have a couple of rods out, concentrate on feeding, and when a carp comes along and takes your bait off the surface, it will hook itself against the weight of your lead. It's not necessarily as enjoyable as, as fishing with a, with a float and watching them take the bait and striking, but it can be super effective, especially at longer ranges when it's hard to see your hook bait. Finally, there's a rig which isn't really a rig. You just tie a hook on the end of your line, and that is freelining. It feels wrong to not mention freelining because I've caught some of my biggest ever carp literally using line and a hook. So whilst there's all these different rigs that will enable you to fish effectively in different depths and over different lake beds, freelining is quite possibly the best way to go and catch yourself a bigger carp. Yeah! Did that really just happen? Did that really, really just happen? Because you can select the fish that you cast in front of. I might hook on some maggots, a worm, a sweet corn, or fish on the surface with bread and dog biscuits. But being able to flick a bait out in front of a fish, tears it back in front of its nose, pull it away from the smaller ones, is definitely gonna put the odds in your favor as far as selecting a bigger carp.
If any of the rigs in this video were confusing to you or you want to learn how to tie them in more detail and learn more about them, I've got links down below in the description to this video to full films which will explain exactly how to tie each of the setups. Hopefully you enjoyed watching and learned something. I'll see you guys on the Fishing Tutorials channel again soon. That was a very exciting bit of fishing. I'm happy that the, uh, the stalking paid off eventually.